We knew Mike Zimmer was going to be out. Now we know Rick Spielman is out. It is a full reset here in Minnesota. We're going to talk about it and everything you guys have to have to ask about it here on Twitter Tuesday on the Lockdown Vikings podcast. You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day. Today's podcast is brought to you by OnlineGambling.com, the place to be for all the latest gambling news and tips throughout the NFL playoffs. Visit OnlineGambling.com slash NFL to get the edge over the competition throughout this year's playoffs. Uh, today on the show, it's Twitter Tuesday, which is kind of perfect because the Vi- Black Monday was yesterday. So it happened. Mike Zimmer out. Rick Spielman out. I kind of thought maybe he was going to take that. A lot of people did thought that he was going to take like another job in the organization. He didn't. So he instead is going to take his chances on the market. Best of luck to both of them. But we're moving on. And that means that it is time to think about what's next. Think about what didn't work here. Kind of uh, talk about some of the things that are starting to come out now that Mike Zimmer is out and now that things might not be as tight lipped. Um, and some things that, I mean, players have even, even said in, in press conferences on Monday, it was a weird day in Minnesota. So we have to talk about it. And you guys asked a lot of questions. We're going to get to all of this via your questions. Um, if you have questions for Twitter Tuesday, you can always send them to me at Luke Braun NFL or at Locked on Vikings. I'll hopefully get around to them eventually. You can also send emails to uh, locked on Vikings podcast at gmail.com, or you can fill out the Google form, which should be in the show notes. Uh, the first question of this Twitter Tuesday comes from Bradley Knorr who asks, how quickly do you expect us to find a new GM and head coach? This is probably the most burning question. But how, where do we go from here? What's the timeline like? So hard to know, right? They kind of just decided exactly the way they're going to go. And the process probably would have been affected if Spielman had stayed on board. He isn't. So now they can kind of move forward knowing that. But that means that they are... Um, they haven't even requested any inter- GM interviews yet. There's three GM openings in the NFL this year, um, for now, the Giants and the Bears and then us. Um, the Giants and Bears have already requested interviews with people. The Vikings have not yet done so. Uh, you don't have to be in too much of a competitive hurry. It's not like the best GM candidate ever is going to get swept up off the market or whatever, and you didn't get to it in time or anything like that. These guys are picking like a big long term. Uh, making a big long-term this decision. They're not just going to take the first person who comes. Like It's not like free agency. Um, that said, probably GM interviews are going to start coming pretty soon, the next day or so, and then in the next, like I would say, week, maybe two, there will be a new GM in Minnesota we can talk about. And who that person is, we'll probably talk a little bit more tomorrow. I kind of want to wait till I know who they're interviewing so I can go in more in-depth on those people instead of trying to cast a wide net. Um, and then... After the Super Bowl, I would say a head coach should probably be hired by then, if not sooner. Um, But of course, if you're going to interview people and hire them and stuff, you kind of want to wait for them to lose out of the playoffs, right? Um, You can always request an interview during the playoffs and stuff like that. But in reality, wait, some of these guys are still coaching, right? So um, after the Super Bowl, head coach should be set. And then they will start to deal with some of the cap questions and what do we do with Kirk or Daniil Hunter's contract and all that stuff. But Mark Wilf came out in a uh, press conference during uh, like in the wake of firing Zimmer and Spielman and basically said, yeah, we're basic. We are not going to make any decisions. The Wilfs won't. Um, we are going to hire the people who make the decisions. We don't know football, but we're going to hire somebody who does, and then they're going to go do it. So when it comes to what's going to happen to Kirk, what's going to happen to Hunter, all of those questions, I don't know. I don't even know who's going to answer those questions, so I can't ex- exactly like speculate as to what their answer will be. I have no idea who it, who it even is. Um, the next question is an interesting one. It comes from Nick Howard who asks, what do you make of the reports floating around that Zimmer didn't address the team after getting fired? Um, yeah, so I think this stems from something Darren Wolfson said, where he was like, yeah, the, the, that Zimmer didn't address the team in the morning. Um, Spielman did. And of course, that's like not a great look. But Zimmer kind of had been addressing the team all week. There'd been a lot of farewell to it and stuff like that. 
I wouldn't really make much of that. And then there was a lot going on when people like he didn't like put out his thank you to Minnesota. He didn't release a statement uh, like in the afternoon, but then he did later in the evening. And it was like people I think were just impatient. I don't know why, like whatever the team just posted it later. Like, who cares? Uh, But in some of the press conferences with players, with Eric Kendrick specifically, Brian O'Neill said some stuff like that. Um, it, some of the stuff about Zimmer's relationship with the players started to come out. And it sounds like, and you could have found this uh, too if you dug, um, there's a Ty Dunn piece that I thought, I don't know, had a lot of bias to it um, and seemed to kind of cite a couple of really disgruntled people. I didn't know how much of a pattern it was. But with Eric Kendricks piling on here, it, it gains an air of legitimacy, especially he's doing so in an official capacity. But it seems like he had a pretty fractured relationship with some of the players. Um, Eric Kendricks said, you know, hey, I I want somebody that I feel like I can talk to, kind of implying that Zimmer wasn't that. And the big quote that's going around is that somebody asked him, hey, you know, what do you want in a coach? And he went off on this whole thing about, you know, good leader, a communicator, somebody to hold you accountable, all those stuff. And then he said, you know, like a culture of fear is not the way to do it, was his quote. And that echoes some of the other sentiments that have floated around over the years of, you know, players feeling a little bit afraid to come forward with a problem, um, f- afraid to speak up and maybe felt a little bit stifled in that way. And some of the people who have left is in, in a huff, you know, Jaron Kerr, Stefan Diggs, Jerry Gray. Um, I, I think that might kind of play into that where there's a little bit of, you know, you, you shouldn't have to walk around looking over your shoulder all the time. Um, that dynamic with Mike Zimmer is starting to get a little bit of a light shown on it now that Mike Zimmer is out. There's not much we can do with that. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and talk about it for weeks on end. Um, cause there just isn't much that we, there's nothing actionable, right? Like, what are we going to do? Fire him over it? He's gone. Um, but I guess, yeah, fire him over it is what you do. And that's what happened. So a really interesting thing there. But kind of related, so apparently, according to Charles Robinson of Yahoo Sports, who tweeted this out, said that he had a bunch of sources tell him that the some of the fallout with the situation with Zimmer was part of the reason that Rick Spielman didn't stay around. And from what I understand, that's Rick Spielman's choice, that he was given the option, that the Wilfs wanted him to stay and he chose not to. Um, and so I, I don't know what fallout means. I don't know what any of that means. And I'm curious to find out. If I find out, you'll know. Um, but all really, really interesting stuff here. Um, there's a lot more questions and I I don't want to miss any of those. Uh, but first a question for you, how long are you waiting to procrastinate to do your taxes? Look, it's not due till April, but you get on it right now. Use TurboTax. TurboTax experts are like super hyped to help you solve your puzzle because you are a unique person with unique circumstances. Whether you had a kid this year, whether you got married this year, anything about your family, you moved, you had a new job, maybe you were a nine to five and now you're freelance, anything like that. It's going to change the way you file, and the TurboTax Live experts are on hand all the time, dedicated to answering all of your tax questions and finding every single deduction for you. And you can talk to them from your phone without ever having to leave your house. With COVID everywhere, that is pretty uh, pretty nice. Doesn't matter what you did, how things change. Life is interesting, you are interesting, and TurboTax Live experts are interested in figuring out your situation. Visit TurboTax.com to learn more. You do your thing, and they've got your taxes. Into it, TurboTax Live. Once again, thank you so much for making Lockdown Vikings your first listen of the day. Let's continue with this mailbag, and we're getting to some of the big points about Zimmer and Spielman going. The next one comes from Viking Theorist, who says, What's your opinion on firing Spielman outright instead of keeping him in an elevated slash advisory role? Him not being here at all has to be more enticing to a potential GM than the alternative, right? Um, Yeah, so like I said before, I think that was Rick Spielman choosing not to be in Minnesota. Um, That's the way I understand the situation. And why he did that, what was wrong with Minnesota, what he didn't want about it, I I don't know. I can't answer that for you. But either way, it is like a full-on reset. And I I guess there's been some whisper around that GM candidates were a little hesitant to, like, have a the guy they're replacing looking over their shoulder and being like technically like feeling a little bit, maybe micromanaged that way or something like that dynamic was a little bureaucratic, I think was a word used Um, that 
maybe that would have affected things and not having him around would would help for me like if i were a new gm i probably would have wanted an experienced person like kind of looking around and i think i've been talking about that so i don't know but maybe those guys disagree maybe that's the reporting um but yeah i i do think right now the vikings are, are trying to make this look as attractive as a job as possible the way that mark wilf was talking about it in that presser um, there was a lot of, hey, you know, we want to give you all the control. We, we you know, the, the, the Wilfs don't want to make football decisions. If you ever see somebody say, oh, the Wilfs strong armed him into that quarterback or the Wilfs made the, somebody, so and so do that. The Wilfs don't want to have anything to do with the football side. They are they don't want to make the wrong decision. They know that they don't know anything about like football and they're going to get football people in to make those decisions and they're going to give them all the power and all the support that those guys want. Um, that makes it an attractive job for like a GM. And so I, I hopefully, I mean, that's like what they're selling, right? So hopefully somebody's buying it, uh, especially one of these. There's like 17,000, like 30 something fast risers that have gotten a promotion every year the last six years and are like Ivy League analytics people that are all like really rising through the ranks. And it seems like the Vikings are looking toward those type of guys, the um, Quessy from Cleveland, Brandon Brown from Philadelphia, those type of dudes. Um, but that, not exclusively, though. They're, no Stone Unturned was also a a chorus of the Mark Wilf uh, press conference. Traumatized fan says, how important is it to bring in a coach with the ability or the staff who have the ability to develop a young quarterback? Um, if their plan is to do a young quarterback, yeah, that's I, might be the, the single most important thing that a, a, a staff football staff has to do is get the quarterback right, right? If that means bringing in a young one and developing him, you know, doing the Josh Allen thing, if that's what that means, then yeah, it's probably the most important thing out there. If that means maybe you're bringing in a front office and a coach that likes Kirk Cousins and thinks they can get the best at them, them being right about that is the most important thing in that case, right? Because if not, then you're stuck in the same quagmire and, and you're going to be eight and nine, but you can't really change it. And like, you don't want to be in that situation. But if they're right and it turns into something more successful than what Zimmer and Spielman were able to achieve with Kirk Cousins, then fantastic, right? It's the most important thing. Uh, it's quarterback's the most important position. I don't need to tell you that. Swamp Sparrow says, will you miss the Kirk chaos meter once we trade him? Not the player himself, mind you, just the meter and the memes. I will, of course, miss the Kirk memes if Kirk goes. There are so many fun. I mean, I will have to take the OOE out of the top of the podcast. I don't want to do that. that. I love the OOE at the top of the podcast. Um, I love the chaos meter. If you don't follow me on Twitter or read uh, my articles at Zone Coverage, read my articles at Zone Coverage. But after every game, I do the chaos meter, which is just measuring how chaotic Kirk's game was. Was it a super conservative Chucky Downey game? Was it a lot of fumbles and a bunch of chaos or was it that perfect amount? Um, I, I love the chaos meter. It makes me helps me parse Kirk Cousins. So, yeah, of course I'll miss it. Skull Actuary says, how do those incentives we hear about people reaching in week 18 affect the salary cap? Um, the short answer to this is not very much at all because they're pretty small money in most cases. Um, sometimes there'll be an incentive of, you know, you get eight million dollars if you play this many snaps or whatever. For the Vikings, I think all of them are like 250K, 500K. It's pretty small stuff against the cap. I think if everybody hit theirs, and I don't know who hit what, but I think if everybody hit their incentives, it would have been like a million and a half dollars or something like that. It's pretty small in the grand scheme of things of a you know $208 million salary cap. Uh, some of that also might have counted already against the cap. And then if they don't hit it, it no longer counts. So if it's a likely to be earned, let's say you got 10 tackles in a year just to make up a number. And then you got an incentive that said, okay, if you get 10 tackles again, you get, you know, $500,000 and then you only get nine tackles. The way that works against the cap is it count that that is charged against the cap. You have $500,000 that counts against the cap, but the second the season ends and you don't get it, you actually get that money back. So there might be some of that too, but either way, it's all nickels and dimes. Uh, when it comes to grand scheme of, of a gigantic salary cap. JV Swaps says, do you trust Minnesota leadership in their search for a GM and head coach and why? Do we have a choice? I mean, we don't really, right? So it sounds like uh, they are having, the, the Wills basically said they're going to trust their internal leadership to do the coaching search. They're not going to get an outside firm or anything like that. Um, th by the implication, my guess would be that it's Rob Brzezinski and Andrew Miller doing the actual hiring. Andrew Miller is the chief operating officer, more of a business side guy. They're going to be the ones doing the hiring. Um, so I we have to trust them. I have no idea if they're good at this or not. I, I don't know who Andrew Miller is or what his skill set is. Um, but it's not like there's another option. There's the, the guys who own the team own the team. There's no firing the owner. Even you know, there's there's no other option here. So we kind of have to trust Minnesota leadership. We'll see who they get. And but, but here's the thing. 
whoever they get, GM or head coach, I'm going to do my best to have a take at the beginning. If I'm proven wrong, I'm proven wrong, but I'm going to do my best to evaluate it on my own right and, and see if I like it or not. Whether or not I trust the people who did that, I'm not going to defer to their authority anyways. I'm going to come up with my own opinion. Skylar Gear asks, would you like the idea of Brian Flores in Minnesota? I was thinking just as DC, but he'll probably get a head coaching opportunity. Um, I, a lot of people ask stuff like, what about this guy? What about that guy? What about this guy? Well, trust me, we're going to go over a lot of that, especially as interviews come out and we know who the Vikings are actually interested in. Um, uh, sure. I like Brian Flores. It sounds like he got ousted in Miami because of a power struggle. He didn't like the quarterback. Uh, Chris Greer, I think his name is the GM, did like the quarterback and ownership went with the guy that did like the quarterback over the guy who didn't. So they fired Brian Flores. I thought he did pretty well with what he was given in Miami. So I think he deserves another shot. Um, sure. I like him as I like the de he runs the same defense. He runs the man match cover seven, which I like. Um, I mean, that's the Belichick defense. So, yeah, the always I'm always down for that I think you know most teams are running the Belichick defense right now and I think that's pretty good um but yeah I'll, I'll get more in depth on all of those guys in at a, at a over the course of the the next couple weeks um there's a few more questions here that I want to make sure I get to uh but first let me talk to you about my new favorite app get upside is an awesome app where you can save money on gas who doesn't want to do that you just open up the app it's a free app app store google play just download the free app enter promo code touchdown by the way I'll tell you why in a second. And then when you open it up, it'll show you like all the gas stations that are participating. You go to one of those, fill up, take a picture of your receipt, upload it, and then you just get cash back. You get 25 cents a gallon off in, in cash back. You can deposit that whenever you want. And if you entered promo code touchdown, like I told you to, you get 50 cents a gallon off on the first fill up. 50 cents a gallon. That is a lot of money if you drive a lot. That adds up to like two, 300 bucks a month. So go get the Get Upside app, free app, enter promo code touchdown, and you can just start getting cash back. You can withdraw it however, whenever you want. Um, it takes like a day or two to process, and then you can just direct deposit it right in your bank. Or do Google Play or Amazon gift card if, if you prefer something like that. So that is the Get Upside app. One more time, promo code touchdown. Also, we talk a lot about Gramblin here on this show. But you want to be careful about that stuff. You know, you want to make sure you're placing a bet that makes sense. Do a little bit of research. That is what OnlineGambling.com is for. It's a website dedicated to giving gamblers the edge. Throughout the playoffs, they'll be providing you with the best NFL tips, news, and more to help make your bets as informed as ever. OnlineGambling.com gives gamblers the edge by providing the best and most trusted experience online all day, every day, inspiring everyone in the world to beat the odds. Don't make emotional decisions with your hard-earned dollars. Make informed decisions, do the research, and let information sourced by experts guide you. Be sure to consult OnlineGambling.com before placing your bets. Make sure you visit OnlineGambling.com slash NFL for all the latest gambling news and tips to give you the edge throughout the playoffs. Remember OnlineGambling.com slash NFL to make the most of this year's playoffs. Let's wrap out this mailbag, shall we? The next one comes from Austrian Vikings fan, love it, who says, what was your favorite Mike Zimmer moment in his tenure with the Vikings? Few people ask something like this. Um, there's another one kind of similar coming up later. Uh, for me, it's the miracle, obviously, but that's too easy of an answer. So without that, I would probably say, like, I guess the other playoff win? Beating the Saints in overtime as the sixth seed felt really good. I know a lot of people were like, it was a hollow victory. It didn't mean anything because they didn't get to the Super Bowl. Nah, screw that. They went and beat up a three seed and ruined somebody's season and it made a push, right? You know, like They were like, it was a two score loss, I think, in San Francisco. If they play a little better that time, like, you know, sky's the limit. You got to win playoff games to win the Super Bowl. And they did that. That that was the best part. That was that felt good. Uh, Sank said, would George Payton and Kevin Stefanski be a good GM and a head coach con combo? Maybe, um, but here's what I'll say to this. Let's move forward with all of these things. There's a lot of, oh, we regret Daniel Carlson. We were going to look at Stefan Diggs. Look at all. There's a lot of former Vikings. Cordero Patterson's doing stuff now. Laquan Treadwell's doing stuff now. Like, there's a lot of former Vikings. It's been eight years of this. People are going to come and go. It's time to move forward and get over things. Anything that happened more than two years ago is old news to me and does not need to be relitigated. What happened happened... If you're upset about losing Stefanski and you're upset at Spielman for making that uh, decision, well, I got great news for you. He's out and it's time for a whole new thing. So move forward. Think of names that aren't necessarily just the ones you recognize from being on the Vikings before. I, I have no idea if George Payton's a good GM. He's only had one year in, in Denver and Kevin Stefanski's got a kind of one and one. He made the playoffs once. He missed the playoffs once. I have no idea. Let's look at other people, though. Time to move forward. Eyes ahead. Eyes to the future. You got it? All right. With that in mind, Jordan Barrett says, what is the worst 
<laughs> head coach and GM hiring, you can imagine, that seemed like an actual possibility. Oh, no. Um, okay. For me, Lou Riddick is one that people have suggested a lot, and I don't really get it. He was never that successful um, in the NFL. He was like a scout until Andy Reid got fired in 2013 and everything got cleared out in the Eagles, which is where he was. And then he went to the media. And I guess he just talks about analytics a lot in the media. So people are like, he's an analytics guy. But if you want an analytics guy, there are a lot of young risers that have kind of turned heads in the NFL. Guys like Brandon Brown, guys like Rex Hogan. He's with the Jets right now. Spent a lot of time under Chris Ballard. Um Quesi Adolfo Mensa, like I mentioned before, um, Ryan Poles is an interesting one. He's a 39 year old. And he's kind of been this surprise. There's a lot of young, fresh takes on things that you can get without just going to like the face you happen to recognize from TV. So that would be a bad one. And then a, a bad head coach might be Lane Kiffin. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Lane Kiffin. Um, he's there's some smoke that the Vikings are interested in Lane Kiffin. But don't panic. There's a lot of interest this time of year. Um, but that would be interesting, right? Cause that flamed out like so hard before. So I, I don't know. Uh, Hereford Vikings says it's 2014. The Vikings search for a head coach is underway with hindsight on his tenure now available. Would you still appoint Mike Zimmer? God, that's hard. I, so here's the question really is, I mean, look with hindsight knowing, yeah, it'll be eight years and you don't win a Super Bowl. I guess not. But like, I don't know who else you go with there. If you look at the other 2014 head coaches, there was like Bill O'Brien and then like Jim Caldwell. And I think like Lovey Smith with the Bucks, like things that like totally flamed out uh, Mike Pettin with the Browns, like total disasters. And so Mike Zimmer was kind of the only good guy on the market that year. So I guess if I had to pick between all those guys i'd pick mike zimmer again sure that obviously turned out the best um but i I mean no i'm not gonna say yeah eight years without a super bowl that worked like of course not um so i i don't know process wise i think they did a fine job i think they got the best guy available to them but if i had a time machine i i don't know i i would say let's just like not do this and then uh, get doug peterson or something like that or somebody who would win a super bowl right if i if i had the time machine and i could play with it that way um obviously that's a lame way to do it but i don't know i'm not like mad at them for hiring mike zimmer eight years ago that was pretty good tenure Nicholas Bartel says, do you think the Vikings may have a disadvantage needing a GM and head coach? If they're searching for a GM before the coach, some top candidates may have already been taken jobs and we only get the leftovers. No. So again, it's not like free agency where the best names are snapped up, you know, two days before the tampering window opens. This is, I mean, especially with GMs, but with coaches too, people don't want to get trapped. Nobody wants to be be David Cullied. Nobody wants to be Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkes is a better one. Steve Wilkes, Arizona head coach for one year, went three and 13. They pick first overall. He got fired. He was basically a lame duck for one year. Cliff Kingsbury takes over, gets Kyler Murray, and now he gets to be the coach. Nobody wants to be a Steve Wilkes. So when you're looking at a place like who's going to take over in Jacksonville or who's going to take over in some, you know, dysfunctional, what's going on with the Bears? You know, am I going to be safe? Uh, Coaches will take their time. It's also, I mean, January and February. There's no rush to get into it. So... If you you can say, hey, I'm going to wait and interview with the Vikings. Thanks for your time, Broncos or whoever. And then I'll decide. I think it's a lot more about making the right decision than it is about making the fast one. So I'm okay with that. Um, But I mean, look, if the coach they really, really wanted gets hired before they have their GM, uh, so be it. But if you could only succeed with the one guy and you can't figure out something else with every other potential candidate out there in the entire world, maybe it wasn't going to happen in the first place. Uh, Landon Renly says, what are your three favorite things from the Zimmer era plays scheme quotes? Anything related to Zim or Rick? Um, OK, so I'll give one to Rick and it is the the tr- the draft board trading. Somebody else asked a question about like the draft board trading, too. So I'll answer that, too. Like, is it actually good to trade around in the draft? Um So, yes, the draft board trading is good. It is just a positive value thing. It is different. Like, look, if you trade down from the third round and you get two picks in the fourth round, that's good. You gave yourself more opportunities. If you then go and mess up those opportunities by picking a bad player, that's a separate problem. But getting yourself more opportunities is a good thing. And if you whiff on a fourth round pick, you are probably whiffing on the third round pick, too. So you might as well give yourself more bites at the apple. That's also bears out like mathematically and stuff if you're interested in that. 
Um, but I, I like that and I, I want that to continue. Um, I, I like the focuses on athleticism and kind of general draft philosophy stuff, even though a lot of picks didn't work out. Um, I think that it is a good way to build like depth of your roster. I know we like to focus on who are the superstars on the team, but you do have to build a 53 man roster. And if you don't have depth, you get to situations where you're starting Sean Mannion in a must win game or where one injury, you're one injury away from being stock DJ one and having to set the edge for the entire season and then getting run up and down the field. You need to get that depth. And that happens in the late rounds as well. And Spielman obviously didn't do a good enough job of that, but I do like the, uh, I, I like the, volume-based approach there. With Zimmer, I love the schematic adaptability. Um, I mean, the offense changed complexions three times. The defense changed complexions three times. They adapted their scheme all the way through. This wasn't like a Pete Carroll situation where it's cover three, cover three, cover three, cover three, cover three. Um, and now he's doing more cover three zone match stuff now, but it's still like he wants to be a cover three, eight in the box kind of team. Um, that was, I like the adaptability of the Zimmer era. And... I think the continuity of the stars, I think we really got to fall in love with some people. You know, we got to fall in love with, with Harrison Smith and Anthony Barr and Eric Kendricks over the last few years. It, like, Ring of Honor, like, Harrison Smith's a Ring of Honor Viking, and we got to watch his whole career here. Isn't that fun? We're definitely not done talking about all this, and we'll keep the conversation going tomorrow on the Locked On Vikings podcast. Uh, in the meantime, check out the Locked On Bets podcast. They'll help you get your playoff grambles straight, and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, skull.